Hey gang, Pastor Greg here. As all of you know, there, there's a lot going on in our world. You know, you turn on the TV, look at your phone, open up the newspaper, and all we hear about is the coronavirus, the coronavirus. And it's creating a lot of fear in people to where they're stockpiling water and toilet paper and dog food. Now, now concerns about this disease are not unwarranted nor should they be taken lightly. I mean, lives are at stake. But there is a danger that we allow ourselves to be controlled by our fears that we no longer walk by faith. You see, I'm a pastor. I'm not a politician. I'm not a doctor. So, so in times of uncertainty, I look to the Word of God for comfort and guidance. So this is what I would like to share with you. First of all, remember the words of Jesus, who said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. John 14, 1. Gang, God is in control. There's never a time or never a situation where he's not in control. He is in control. Secondly, I want you to remember that God is always working. In John 15, Jesus said, My Father is always working, and so am I. Even in times when we don't see God's hand, or, or, or we don't understand what He's doing, we know that He's always up to something great. And thirdly, I want you to remember what Paul wrote to the Philippians. He says, Do not be anxious for anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So Paul says the formula is simple. Number one, don't be anxious for nothing. Well, how do I do that? Well, number two, he says, pray about everything. Well, well I have been praying, and Quite frankly, it's not helping. Well, thirdly, give thanks for something. In other words, focus on what the Lord has given you and how he is blessing you and how he has shown himself faithful to you and get your focus off your fears. And what will be the result? Number four, the peace that goes beyond our comprehension will guard our hearts our emotions, and our minds, our thought patterns in Christ. Now, as it relates to what's going on in our state and the coronavirus, your health and your safety and the well-being of your children are of the utmost importance to us as a church. And we've been closely monitoring the local and national public health updates and determining what is in the best interest of our flock during this time. So after much prayer and deliberation, we have decided to suspend services on our campus for the next two Sundays. Now, this wasn't an easy decision, because there's never a time when we need to hear more from the Lord or to be finding support from our brothers and sisters in Christ than in a time of emergency. But these large gatherings are our greatest threats. So what are we going to do? Well, first of all, we will be streaming our worship services on our Facebook page at our usual times, Sundays, 9.30 in English and 11.30 in Spanish. And this way, you can continue to be fed the Word of God. Uh, we'll have worship, we're going to have teaching, we'll have prayer, just as we normally would, except it's going to be online. Secondly, all gatherings that take place at the church, be it our Tuesday night prayer meeting, our Wednesday night discipleship classes, or our youth get-togethers, all of those are going to be canceled for the next week only for the next week, March 14th through the 21st. Well, why? Well, even though these groups are relatively small, 
and therefore the risk is minimal. But being a small office staff, we need some time to reorganize and readjust our ministries to provide the safest environment for our people. So all the campus Bible studies and prayer groups will be taken on a one-week hiatus. Thirdly, as I stated previously, there's never a greater need for the church to minister than in times of crisis. So I am going to maximize our online presence with teachings, words of encouragement, all throughout the week in order to be that spiritual support to each and every one of you. Now lastly, I want you to know we are still here for you. Uh, all we are doing is taking a break from our large gatherings, but the pastors are still available to minister, to counsel, to pray, whatever might be the need. So don't hesitate to call us. Now, many have been asking, saying, well, how can we be sure that Calvario as a church is solid? And how can we continue to fulfill our Christian responsibilities if we're not gathering together? Well, I would tell you guys, this is your part. One, be there for each other. Uh, see, that's what we are to do as a church body. We're to be there to support and pray and encourage one another during times of need. So can I ask you to make an effort to call, to message your friends and spiritual family during this time? And, and if you learn of a need, let the pastors know so we can minister to them as well. Secondly, I want to ask you to continue to practice generosity. See, I love this about Calvario, that we are a generous people. Not because we have to, but because as God is transforming us into the likeness of Jesus, we want to give. And as a church family, about 80% of the donations we receive are given when people are here in person and on campus. And obviously, if we were unable to receive those gifts, it'd be impossible for us to keep moving forward. So I want to encourage all of you to use our online giving platform. It's part of our bulletin app, as well as the link is provided below. Because even though we're not meeting together, we are committed to ministering to our people and to helping those with need. But for us to practice generosity, the online giving is the best way to do that during this season. And lastly, I encourage you to tune in to our internet services. And can I encourage you maybe to invite friends and family to sit down and share with you? you see, oftentimes during these seasons of crisis, people begin to seek the things of God. And maybe this is an opportunity for that loved one, that friend, that family member to hear about the love and grace of Jesus Christ and for him to draw that person to him personally. I'm going to be sharing messages of hope and of peace that, that, that can only be found in Jesus. So tune in. Invite your family and friends to be a part. Well, before I sign off, I want to pray for our community, for our families here and abroad during the season of of really unique needs and during which I believe God wants to do some amazing things in. So, so pray with me. Father, I want to thank you. I want to thank you so much that you have always been in control and that this situation is not out of your control and that you can use this, you can use all things for your good and for your purposes. And Lord, we trust in you and we depend that you are doing mighty, mighty things. Father, I want to pray for our church family that you would place a hedge of protection around each and every one of them, around their children. We especially pray for those uh, that are elderly amongst us, Lord, that you would watch over them and that you would protect them and watch over them. 
We want to pray for those that govern us, uh, for our president, for our governor, for our, 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 the minister of health and everybody else, Lord, that you give them wisdom and how to deal with this crisis so that it minimizes any fatalities or, or, or any losses. But Lord, we trust that you are in this and that you're going to use this to do a mighty, mighty work. We thank you, Lord, and pray your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, gang, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you online this Sunday. God bless you.